For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global and welcome to this special series on the Bangladesh War of Liberation in 1971. Uh, I'm Surya Vengadran, and today we are looking at the Indo-Soviet Treaty of Peace, Friendship, and Cooperation. Uh, many of you would have heard of it. Uh, it's seen as an iconic document, although controversial. And I have with me Ambassador G. Parthasarthi, who was present at the negotiations leading to the uh, uh, document, to the treaty. And um, he was uh, first secretary at the Indian Embassy in Moscow at that time. Ambassador, welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador, this uh, treaty is seen as controversial, you know. So, why was it um, uh, signed in the first place for a non-aligned country like India? First of all, uh, we must realize the circumstances at that point in time. We were seeing the beginnings of a Nixon Mao honeymoon. We were seeing being it being midwife with midwife by his Secretary of State or at that time National Security Advisor. Henry Kissinger. Uh, none of them had, at that point in time, great uh, friendly feelings to India, and uh, Nixon never had them. Yeah. Uh, the uh, thing is that at, th at that point in time, we were aware of some goings on with Pakistan playing a role, a role. and they were actually serving Nixon's interest hmm. by uh, this. Um, uh, Uh, midwifing a, dip, a, 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 a coup of friendly relations between the United States and China. Nixon was never a great friendly man. The, the, and the midwifing was being done by Pakistan. Pakistan was the intermediary and uh, the uh, between these two. You see, his trip to India, Kissinger's trip to India was a fake. It was a ploy to divert us to the reason he was going to Pakistan. He was headed to Pakistan to tie up the details mm -hmm. of a visit by Nixon to China, which would be path break. Uh, and thereafter, uh, this the, this process of theirs moved on. We were not aware of it, to be honest, and we mm -hmm. went about business as usual. But the, we were feeling the heat from the refugees flowing in and becoming quite unbearable and no nobody doing anything to, to fix it mm -hmm. so uh, at a certain stage when our ambassador went to meet uh henry kissinger i think it was in california at that point in time because that was where nixon's uh, spare white house was located yeah. and uh, kissinger gave him a clear warning that look uh, i see tensions getting out of hand But if uh, this leads to anything more serious, uh, India cannot expect uh, U.S. understanding. So don't escalate. Was the message? Mm -hmm. I so think that uh, was the uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You were asked. I think that yeah, was the turning turning point mm -hmm. because till then uh, we were dealing with both normally. We were trying to be even-handed. And we found the incidentally the Europeans much more sympathetic to our point of view, mm -hmm. but we didn't know that we were caught in the middle of this uh, budding honeymoon between the Americans and the Chinese. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, uh, what happened was that when Kissinger told us this, gave us this warning, and taking into account the fact that he had we had by then got to know about what was transpiring with China, uh, we decided we had to do something. And therefore, the uh, Europeans were sympathetic, but had nothing much to offer. Not yeah. even a view of the Security Council. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, uh, uh, Americans were hostile, uh, and the Chinese were certainly then uh, not particularly friendly. In fact, I'm not sure if they had even entered the UN at that point mm -hmm. in time. But yeah. uh, the fact of the matter is that we were. Faced with a U.S.-China axis, quite surprisingly, 
So they, they, we had at that time a treaty of friendship which was being talked about it, but no one was in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So can, you, so can you yeah. just sort of interrupt? Is it easy to pinpoint any one person who was behind this idea of a treaty of friendship with the Soviets? No, this came, it came really much earlier when Grechko visited India. That, that was when? About two years earlier, I think. Okay. Mm. So we had just to dust it up. And then uh, Deepidhar arrived there. He was PM's special envoy for all practical purposes. Though he was in charge of all security operations post the refugee influx. Mm -hmm. And uh, he negotiated this treaty um, pretty quickly. I, I was not present at it. I learned, I learned, learned later why it came. But uh, yeah, he signed, and uh, we went back. Romiko followed him a week later, and uh, the Americans were saying, "What is this doing and flowing between them? What the what? What has each got for the other?" Mm. And then when the treaty was signed in Delhi, <laughs> they hit the roof. All hell broke loose. Uh, all hell broke loose. They didn't know about it, and we had kept it very close. And the uh, treaty, it was not a military treaty. All that they said is, if there is a threat to the security of either, mm -hmm. the two sides shall consult with each other on what needs to be done. That's all. There was mm -hmm. no defense clause in that treaty. And it mm -hmm. respected our non-alignment. So it was very mm -hmm. carefully drafted at that point in time. Mm -hmm. But and uh, would you say, things, yeah. Would you yeah. say that... Um, uh, you know, these things are understood, isn't it, in uh, diplomacy? Is that when you say the two sides will consult each other, isn't yes. it um, a fairly vague way of saying that, you know, we will do this and that, but that's understood. But they would say that, and we would say, no, 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 it's uh, purely for friendship and, and goodwill. So uh, the uh, fact of the matter is that uh, we, uh, we went ahead with the treaty. And I must say, uh, even within the Soviet hierarchy, hmm. there was the pessimist Prime Minister Kosygin and the optimist President Podgorny and Party Secretary Brezhnev. Mm -hmm. uh, and Brezhnev was just then emerging as the number one. Mm -hmm. So um, they, uh, we decided, to, to, I mean, cooperation picked up, uh, various things happened, military supplies were. Uh, enhanced and moved quickly because the Russian system, Soviet system, yeah. was not exactly streamlined. Yeah. So, but they, 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 they did help out. But uh, as I said, uh, there were uh, the pessimists. Kosygin was dead set against there being any uh, summit, I mean, any uh, conflict uh, or getting involved. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think ultimately the what the Politburo must have decided what to, what to do, because mm -hmm. after that cooperation picked up, medical supply, the weapon supplies increased, and the Soviets media, Pravda and Izvestia, started getting more sharp with the Pakistanis. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but till the end, they did not want a conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the final advice was to us was, don't start a conflict. Mm -hmm. They didn't say, <laughs> sit tight if they started. Mm -hmm. So things kept escalating and the Pakistanis did the foolish thing of uh, attacking uh, uh, atta atta attacking on the air bases and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the natural thing uh, followed. But even through this talks, again, DP Dar returned during the conflict. Kosygin was, uh, ah, in between, Mrs. Gandhi had visited. Mm -hmm. And in Mrs. In Gandhi's Moscow. visit, Moscow. That was big. But there again, Kosygin said some things which upset us. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I, that's where my fortunes as a spokesman and press secretary got up. I was the first secretary handling mm -hmm. the media. So I, I got, there, there were all night consultations about this rather silly statement that uh, Kosygin had made. And then uh, just as we were leaving, he was politely asked, made, made to withdraw what he had said the previous. Mm -hmm. 
And, what did he uh, say, sir? What did he say? Something to the effect, if you get into a conflict, it will be disastrous or some words to that effect. <laughs> now, uh, what I'm talking is 50 years ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, she, she went back and it became clear because then the propaganda machinery started in our favor in the yeah. Soviet Union. And uh, we went across. Then, meanwhile, uh, what happened was they were getting frantic messages from India, uh, from the Americans. And they were desperately keen on data to the Americans, mm -hmm. particularly Brezhnev, that he would go down on these three years. And so that, all right, even if they moved along with China, they would get a, a, a data. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a bit of wishful thinking, if you ask me. Because they were quite clear, uh, the Americans appeared quite clear that China yeah. would be a card they would play against the Russians or the Soviet Union. Yeah. And uh, uh, the net, net result was the war broke out uh, and uh, we got uh, two or three Soviet vetoes. We were pretty much isolated, mm -hmm. though Britain and France did not take the American position of hostility. Britain, so they said France, you too. More or less. More or less. Not mm -hmm. enthusiastic without wanting to offend the Americans. More or less. But they mm -hmm. faced a Soviet veto. I think we got So would you Soviet say Soviet. in the treaty was there any reference to the use of the veto in the Security Council of the situation? No, 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 or no, no none, none, none. None. Mm -hmm. None. So so none about the military leader? assistance. None mm -hmm. about this. But both so sides were clear so in, what it was all about. Uh -huh. Yeah. So in the lead up to the uh, issue, uh Use of veto, there would have been some uh, consultation. Oh yes, I mean, I mean, D, uh, D. P. Dhar came once or twice. Uh, they sent an envoy, their uh, first deputy foreign minister, to uh, Delhi to be here when it was happening. So we had D. P. Dhar there, and they had their uh, first uh, uh, first deputy foreign minister in Delhi, uh, sort of coordinating and giving each other a feedback. And uh, it, it dragged on, but uh, thereafter they were pretty cool. But uh, it was very clear uh, towards the end that uh, Nixon got very uh, upset, mm. or so he seemed, and uh, a signal went to them to on on how the, uh, that they should stop us, and that they have CIA information that after finishing with Bangladesh, mm. we were planning to shift our armor westwards, mm. draw the Pakistanis into battle and also, also destroy their armor and their fighting force in the west. Mm. Now, whether that's true or false, I don't know. But mm. uh, that was certainly what they said and the Russians upset, <laughs> very upset. So the envoy here got envoyed. The Americans carried out the usual tamasha of sending an aircraft yeah. carrier to the yeah. uh, to the Bay of Bengal. And the Russians also sent a fleet? No, no they, they sent a, a nuclear submarine following it. That's what we, mm -hmm. uh, we were told at least. Yeah. And um, uh, the uh, when, uh, when, when it ended, of course, we all drank a glass of vodka saying Dadana, as they said. And uh, we mm -hmm. moved on. But uh, very clearly, I have never seen the Americans in such a hostile mood. Uh, shortly after uh, this, uh, I went to uh, the U.S. in a, on a post. Uh, it was Nixon transferred to Carter at that time. Mm -hmm. And while Nixon was on our, uh, against us, Carter wanted to cap, roll back, and eliminate our nuclear oh, program. Yeah. Yeah, I recall that. <laughs> yeah. This like so a that slogan, was like another, right? another, I went through this adventure in, in Moscow and the next adventure in Washington. So it was, it was quite funny dealing with the Americans, but all said and done. Dealing with the Americans, you know, they, they took it in their stride, especially in the U.S. Congress. Yeah. And uh, the Demo Democrats were quite uh, funny to... Uh, Happy to see 
Nixon being, Nixon being look small. So mm -hmm. that, that went on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sir, this uh, use of veto, is there, there must have been a diplomatic or political price we had to pay. I mean, it's not, it doesn't come cheap. Look, you know, uh, yes, I think they were moving something for collective security in Asia. Okay. Uh, which meant, uh, and that was more anti-Chinese than anti-American. And I must mm -hmm. also tell you that during, the, we were told after the war by a very senior <clears throat> official uh, of the Communist Party who had come to see our then ambassador that the Soviets had deployed uh, uh, mechanized divisions on the border with China, on Kazakhstan, to warn them not to interfere. That was conveyed later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember he was the head of the Institute of Oriental Studies. But I remember he was either Uzbek or Tajik. Mm -hmm. That is quite big, isn't it? Yeah. So they saw something in us that uh, um, they, they saw were, something. No, in us. They, 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 no, they were completely taken aback by, by the Nixon uh, Mao Zedong honeymoon. Mm -hmm. One fellow was slightly to the uh, or more to the uh, more to the right of the uh, uh, most right wing politicians in the U.S. Yeah, and Mao was quite quite. Well, Leftwards of the uh, the, uh, the frankly, uh, the Soviets said that this is not Marxism, Leninism. It is Great Han Chauvinism. <laughs> <laughs> that was the description of, of Mao. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we we listen we listen to them, and uh, but uh, very clearly, when the Brezhnev came later with this collective security arrangement. Yeah, Mrs. Gandhi did not want to get involved in something which would, you know, tie her, tie her up. Mm. So mm. we uh, stored things. It moved on. Did that treaty set the stage for Indo-Soviet relations going forward? No, I, it was look Indo-Soviet relations were going forward. Mrs. Gandhi was seen as left of center. Yeah. Uh, at that point in time, after bank nationalization and various other things, so I think um, uh, it was it, it was it was really a question of national interest. It was a question of Soviet national interest to prove that an American Chinese relationship could not prevail over them, mm -hmm. and they had a good choice to do it. So you you, you found this deep the Russian. Chinese uh, view of each other may be often quite different from the show which is put about it for political reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, how the Russia-China connection nowadays seems to be highly, you know, getting together. I say as long as they keep sending us S-400 missiles <laughs> and backing <laughs> us on whatever we're doing, what are we worrying about? It's the Americans mm -hmm. who are worried. Yeah. So just um, uh, looking back, you know, from current situation where there appears to be um, a little more transactional nature of in the India-Russia relationship. Yes, um, it is transactional. It is transactional. Yes, because, listen, uh, uh, Russia has become more a Eurasian power yeah. than a global power. I mean, it may talk of global power. Militarily, it has global reach. But economically, it does not have the capacity to match a combination of the Americans and the Europeans. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is the reality. Mm -hmm. On what a surplus and what it can give. So therefore, with, uh, with India, they appreciate it because we have not been too carried away. I mean, we, our relations with the U.S. has improved. Uh, we will not do, uh, uh, you know, things which upset the U.S., but uh, we will not allow them to have a veto on our foreign policy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And that's something they understand. I think they understand it well enough because um, uh, right, right, right now, uh, as I've seen this relationship evolve, 
uh, the uh, Mr. Putin has and Jai Shankar seem to have them. Jai Shankar has served in in, in Moscow. Uh, his father, K. Subramaniam, was a great admirer yeah. of uh, the, the Soviet yeah. Union uh, in those days, and then, then he also moved on. But uh, yeah, I think um, the uh, relationship has been kept on an even key. I find a lot of people saying, no, no, I should go whole log. The day you lose your options to any power, yeah, yeah, yeah. you are finished. And uh, as I said, even during the 71 conflict, Mrs. Gandhi had a good relationship with the Soviet Union. And when she came to Moscow and was uh, discussing this, uh, there were, uh, she was up, uh, up against these three leaders. There were three opposite her, Brezhnev, Podgorny, mm -hmm. and uh, Kosygin. Kosygin. She was on her own with uh, not even her ex uh, uh, Swarat Singh with her, but certainly with uh, Dipidhar and with uh, Pianaksa. So, yeah. <laughs> on the note, sir, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Very Take much, care. Sir. Yeah. Bye. And for all of you out there who have been watching the show, uh, keep sending us your comments and observations. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, visit our website. Thank you. Goodbye.